In this packet, we will go over inverse functions. First, we have to review one-to-one -one functions. One-to-one -one functions are functions where y values do not repeat. Here are some properties of inverse functions. For a function f of domain a and range b, its corresponding inverse function will have domain B and range A. A couple of examples. Now let's look at some more examples. Example A is not one-to-one -one since y values have some y values that repeat. Example B is one-to-one -one since there are no repeating y values. Example C is a one-to-one -one function. Example D is also one-to-one. -one. Now we review inverse trigonometric functions. In order to have inverse trig functions, we need to restrict domain and range of their original function. By restricting domain to negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 for sine x, it then becomes 1 to 1 and therefore has a corresponding inverse function. The domain for arc sine of x is negative 1 to 1, and range is negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. An example reads as sine inverse of 1 half gives the angle of pi over 6. You can also switch it to read sine of the angle pi over 6 gives the trig ratio of 1 half.
For the function of tan x with domain between negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 and range being all real numbers, it is already 1 to 1. So the arc tan function or inverse is as you see below. The domain is all real numbers and range is between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. An example of arctan of 1 being equal to pi over 4 can also be read as tan of the angle pi over 4 gives the ratio of 1. If we restrict the domain from 0 to pi for the function of cosine, then it becomes 1 to 1 and therefore has an inverse. The domain is negative 1 to 1 and range is 0 to pi over 2 for arc cosine of x. Some examples for finding values. Here is a diagram of what this means. Example B, we rewrite as sine of what angle gives trig ratio of what? And since we know arc sine has to be between pi over 2, or negative pi over 2, and pi over 2, 
the angle will be in quadrant 1 at pi over 2. In example C, when we rewrite this, we know it has to be in quadrant 4 since the inverse sine function has to be between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. In example D, we are looking at secant, so remember that this is the reciprocal of cosine. So drawing a diagram based off the unit circle, we know at pi over 3, cosine is 1 half, so secant pi over 3 will be 2, the reciprocal of 1 half. Example E reads cosine 2 times some stuff, which is cosine of an angle, so let's call that some stuff theta. Also recall this identity. So theta is sine inverse of 5 over 13, which can be written as sine of theta is the ratio 5 over 13. Let's draw a diagram that represents this. When setting this up, we know the opposite side and the hypotenuse. So to find the adjacent side, we use the Pythagorean theorem. So back to the problem, rewrite cos of 2 times theta and use the identity to rewrite it. And now that we know all the information about the triangle, we can find the other ratios and plug them in. Cosine of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse, so 12 over 13, and we already have sine of theta.
and done. A couple more examples solving trigonometric equations.